There's garlic scapes in the box in the back, um, on the back table. And if you're not sure what those are, it's actually the flower of a garlic plant. Uh, you chop it off and that makes the plant put more energy into making a nice big garlic bowl. So for farmers who aren't cooking, it's maybe kind of junk, but it, unless they can sell them, and like, you know, maybe how Jessica does. Um, they taste delicious, and there's some recipes for garlic scapes in your packet. Maybe Jessica will talk more about them. Um, as usual, we have a survey you can fill out, and it's just helpful to get your feedback and improve our program, so thank you for filling that out. Um, what else should I mention? Um, so today there's no full meal since we're doing this in the afternoon, but Jessica was nice enough to bring down a sampling of um, various um, types of produce and some eggs. Um, I'll let her talk about that. I just wanted to share that the dressing on the table is the first, I think it's the first recipe in your packet, um, made with the garlic scapes from her farm. So if you need an idea for your garlic scapes that you're taking home, um, I think the dressing's pretty good, so. Um, I also, so she also, for the greens that we're gonna be eating, I decided not to tear them up because I had fun looking at all the different shapes of the different varieties of leaves of the greens, so. Um, I hope you have fun with that too. <laughs> it is your name of work. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you get a knife. Um, without further ado, Jessica, thanks for being here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my name is Jessica Rungi. I'm from Roots and Wings Farm, which is out in Cherry Creek. I don't know if any of you ever get out that direction, but we are right next to the village park. Um, our driveway is actually on Kent Street, but we have that whole corner between Kent Street and the village park. Uh, so if you drive down 83, come visit. <laughs> um, we, um, we started about five years ago. Well, four and a half years ago, this would be our fifth year. Um, we started small, just growing vegetables and some herbs. Um, a few years later, we got some chickens to start raising some eggs. Last year, we added on pigs, so now we have pork. And last year, we also became certified organic, which is a rather long, involved, complicated process. But we did it, and we are officially certified organic now. Um, we've also grown every year, I guess you could say. We started out as a community-supported agriculture program um, where people would uh, purchase a share of the farm produce. It's kind of like when you when you buy a share in a company, you get stock, and then if the company does well, you receive dividends. But with a farm, if the, comp if the farm does well, you get produce. And the more, the better the year, the better the produce, the more, like if there's tons and tons of carrots that year, you get lots of carrots. If there aren't very many radishes because it was so hot and dry that spring, you don't get many radishes. Um, so it's, it's very much about sharing the risk and the reward with the farmer. Um, and that's actually the way we've operated for the past four years. This year's a little different because we took on four foster kids, <laughs> and so we've had to change things a little bit. Um, Running, running a CSA is very, um, there's a huge commitment to, the, to your customers, you know, providing them with fresh produce each week for, you know, 20, 30 weeks of the year. And having four little kids is, is challenging and doesn't quite uh, work very well with that situation. <laughs> so, so this year what we're doing is we're doing what we call a non-traditional CSA. Um, so instead of people buying a share up front, what we are doing is we're offering um, a website where people can order their produce and you do you can try it twice and then the third time if you want to support us for the year you do pay a $35 membership fee uh, just because we're looking for serious people um, and then you just order what you want when you want pay for what you want and pick it up um, but we still you know as, as a member of the farm you still get to join in the events like our pumpkin picking parties um, you get to come help on the farm you get to know your farmer better it's a very personal relationship where you come to the farm pick up your produce go pet all the animals, hang out with the kids, you know. It's, it just becomes very, it's relationship based, I guess you could say. Um, so that's kind of what we're aiming for this year. So it's, it's a little different, but still the same concept. Um, it, just, it just takes a lot of stress off my shoulders. <laughs> um, let's see. The, on our farm we grow, like I said, back to the vegetables, we grow lots of different vegetables from the regular beans and peas, um, 
zucchini, that kind of stuff, and then we grow some, some more odd things like kohlrabi, uh, garlic scapes, um, what else do we grow? Uh, some strange little winter squashes, uh, some, some very, a lot of heirloom things um, that you don't find in other places. Um, we also grow some items that a lot of farmers just don't grow around here, like, like lettuce mix, um, and snow peas. Snow peas are kind of hard, not a normal thing that people grow. So, and, and to be honest, part of that is just because I like growing different things. That's just my personality, I think. Um, but also, there's there's a need for it. People people are interested in those, and they want those, um, and nobody's supplying them. So we, we try to meet those interests. Um, the the lettuce we're getting thrown in one of our salad mixes. It's a little larger than we usually cut it, but um, but still tastes good. And then there's sugar snap peas. You you can eat the whole pea. You can eat the pod and everything. They're really sweet and crispy. And then the the eggs are hard boiled, so you. Just, Crack your egg and peel it, and there's just some salt on it. Cut it up in your salad. Um, Thank you. If you notice the eggs, the eggs are all different colors and different shapes. That's because we have different breeds of chickens. Um, some of them lay brown eggs, some of them lay, lay a pale, a pale peachy color egg, some lay green eggs or blue eggs. Um, but inside, they're all the regular white egg with yellow. <laughs> The pigs that we're raising, uh, last year I said it was our first year of the pigs. This is our second year. We have three pigs. It's, this isn't very much, but it's, um, we, we, like I said, we start small and then we grow as we go. Um, the pigs are, we, sell, we, we feed them all certified organic grains, but mostly they eat grass. We pasture all our animals. Uh, we move them around the fields in our gardens and as well as in the hay fields. Uh, so they, they actually eat mostly a vegetable diet um, of our own fields. The, the, their feed is all certified organic, whether it's the grain or the grasses. Um, I wonder if this is one of them blue eggs. If that's the green egg, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like they, come, they come from a chicken called an Easter egg chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, um, anyhow, so, so animals that are fed mostly grass and have more of a pasture-based diet, they have leaner meats, but they also have better nutritional value. Um, I'm sure you've all heard that the cholesterol in, the cholesterol in the eggs is, is horrible for you. You shouldn't eat eggs. Well, if you actually eat pastured eggs, especially ones that are supplemented with organic grains, they're actually much better for you than the eggs you buy at the grocery store because they have a higher omega-3 count, they have higher protein values, um, they have more of the good cholesterols and less of the bad cholesterols, mostly because they're eating grass. Uh, it's, it's typical, it's, it's the same sort of thing with grass-fed beef versus grain-fed beef. If you guys have any questions, just raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get any trouble with the army works? Not that I noticed. Um, so far, like, and to be honest, for I think we have a pretty good beneficial insect population that seems to keep everything in check. Uh, we don't. When I when I say we're certified organic, um, certified organic is a minimum standard. You can still use. Uh, we don't eat eggs at all. Natural sprays and natural fertilizers. We don't use a lot of the things that you're still allowed to use. Uh, we don't spray anything except for with some, some seaweed emulsions. But we still have lots of bugs, but we don't seem to have any problems. I have a couple of potato bugs I picked off this year. Really, the, the only problem we've had is the heat and the lack of rain. That's been our hardest challenge this year. He said you use an emulsion. Yeah, it's, what is it? It's called seaweed and fish emulsion. Um, it's a natural part made out of seaweed and dead fish. <laughs> that works. <laughs> but it's a foliar feed. It's like the natural mirror of the growth, really. Uh, but it's, it's that's, that's really the only thing that we use. Uh, that and other than, you know, manure and that kind of thing. Um, another thing about organic being organic, uh, a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people think it's just about the chemicals, but it's also about crop rotation. We rotate all our crops so you don't ever grow tomatoes in the same spot you did last year. It takes, our rotation is probably seven years apart. Um, so that cuts down on disease and insect populations. Um, if you move your crops every year, the insects don't know where your tomatoes are going to be because they aren't in the same place they were last year. Does that, does that make sense? Um, also, we... We use compost and well, vegetable, like plant compost and also manure compost. One of the big differences with organic products is that there are lots of rules.